Good morning, students, YouTube, and the world. This is Ray Lopez, founder of Sword and Book Studio, artist, designer, illustrator, teacher. Today, I want to talk about this amazing book, The Keys to Drawing by Bert Dodson. 55 specific keys to improving your drawings. There's lessons, there's self evaluation checklists. And most of all, it's actually pretty straightforward. Even if you are a beginner, uh, you want to learn more about drawing, or if you are a um, if you're a professional and you just want to dust off a couple of um, methods that you might be doing or not doing that are going to improve your drawings tenfold. In the introduction, is that. When you're drawing, you're exploring a topic, you're trying to understand it enough to draw it, you're having to dissect it and reconstruct it on a two-dimensional surface. Most of the times you're taking an object from the real world, or you're taking a scene, and you're having to recreate it on a flat surface, trying to make it look as if though it was three dimensions. And if, you're, if you try to see drawing as a checklist of all of these things that you're trying to do, you're just going to fumble a lot and you're going to not even enjoy the process of drawing, right? So um, a lot of times when you're drawing, um, you start to fixate on the paper and you're kind of wondering where the pencil goes first and that's not necessarily the best way to go about drawing. Drawing is more about seeing. Um, so you have to spend more time looking and analyzing your subject matter than you do spending time staring at the blank sheet of paper, wondering where else to make your marks. So there's something known as critical dialogue versus practical dialogue, okay? So whenever you're drawing, there's a voice inside of your head that's kind of either being overly critical about what you're doing and um, that's not gonna help you understand what it is that you're trying to draw. That's just gonna actually damper or dampen your mood and it's not gonna let you um, draw. For example, that arm doesn't look right. The foot couldn't possibly turn that way. I never draw the legs right. Why do I have so much trouble drawing faces, right? So those are critical, um, that's, those are examples of critical dialogue uh, right out of the book, right? In the drawing process, okay? Um, practical dialogue, however, are um, very objective um, observations and questions that you ask yourself so that you understand your subject matter and you can draw it more accurately. What does that shape look like? Is it closer to an oval or a circle, right? Something like that. Or is that shoulder line horizontal or is it slightly tilted, right? So as I'm sitting here in this chair and you're watching this video, how are the lines that are, that are running through my body, are they straight, are they horizontal, vertical? Those kinds of simple questions that you ask yourself when you're drawing are gonna help your drawing improve significantly. Other examples of practical dialogue is the distance from the knee to foot greater or less than distance from knee to waist. So that's a comparison of uh, distance and space, right? To make sure that your drawing falls under accurate proportion. So drawing in essence is you're looking at something, you're trying to freeze that in your mind for enough time to then draw it on a sheet of paper because you can't look at your paper and at your subject at the same time, right? So the best kind of posture to have when you're drawing is actually to only move your eyes, okay? The less movement that you make with your head, the more directly connected your drawing is gonna be of your subject matter. So you should really only be moving your eyes up and down right as you move your hand to try to get it to do um, what it is that you're trying to draw okay so one of the other things that he mentions in chapter one is uh, seeing versus knowing okay our mind goes around looking at objects and labeling them appropriately to kind of simplify the world around us so that we can focus on other things but when you're drawing you can't pay attention to those labels and those symbols that your mind is creating you have to look with your eyes, not with your mind. And then your hand is having a conversation with your eye. 
it's almost as if it goes from your eye to your hand without passing through the filters of your brain. So right out of the book, our natural temptation in this case is to make things right by drawing what we know instead of what we see, right? But when you're drawing, your drawing is gonna come alive when you actually draw what you're seeing, not what you think is there, okay? Another really great point that Bert Dotson makes in this first chapter is restating, okay? A lot of times when we're drawing, we might end up erasing more than we're actually drawing. But if you restate your drawing, you are simply drawing a better line or mark next to the one that maybe didn't come out that good the first time. This gives your drawing a little bit more energy and it shows that a drawing is a constant evolution of something that you're trying to understand, trying to refine, trying to make as accurate as you can, okay? So restating is not a bad thing, okay? It um, gives your drawing a little bit more of history to it, okay? So that as a viewer, even you as the viewer uh, later on, you can kind of see how it is that you were figuring out how to draw the thing that you were drawing, okay? So that's restating. Sometimes when you're looking at something and you're trying to draw it, you get overwhelmed by all of the detail um, all of the information that's there in front of you. But if you were to squint, what it does is it makes the subject matter that you're looking at, it makes it blurry and you start to focus on the larger shapes, okay? So a drawing, in order to be constructed successfully, you want to go from big to small, from um, simple to complex, and you usually want to um, overlap in that, in, in that order, okay? It's much harder to map out all of the features on a face if you don't have the shape of the face in there first, okay? So you always want to start from large to small and from simple to more complex. Uh, and squinting does help with that a lot, okay? Um, a good way to warm up even before you start drawing is to actually just... Close one eye and literally air draw the subject that you are looking at in the air a couple of times. It'll actually get you, um, it'll give you a really good feel for what some of those larger shapes that you are trying to draw, what they actually do. And then you just take that same movement and you lower it to your paper. So today, um, thanks to Bert Dodson and the keys to drawing, we talked about practical dialogue versus critical dialogue. We talked about squinting. We talked about air drawing. We talked about restating a drawing. We talked about seeing versus knowing. And we also talked about um, blind contour or drawing blind. And we talked about the best posture to have and the idea of looking more at your subject versus looking down at your paper for too long. Thank you so much for stopping by. Lopez signing off.